Welcome to episode 5 of Lockie Does Footy. We'll be reviewing the Gabba round and we'll be predicting round 5 and also we'll be doing the ladder. Sadly, the footy festival in South Australia has come to an end. It's back to Melbourne for footy festival every week. Adelaide versus Melbourne at Adelaide Oval. I tipped the Crows by a point. Ended up being Melbourne by 15 points. Both the Crows forwards and the Melbourne forwards kicked themselves out of the game. The reason for Melbourne's win is because they got two more guys on the boards compared to what the Crows did. They had 28 scoring shots to the Crows 23. If the Crows had kicked straight, they would have won that match. And uh, how good was Stephen May even with a rib injury? He can still play very good footy. Brisbane versus North Melbourne at Night Oval. I had Brisbane by 40 points, but it was Brisbane by 70 points. North Melbourne were just outclassed. The Brisbane forwards looked lethal out there. Joe Danaher kicked five, but he could have kicked eight. Hugh McCluggage played his best game as a line, 36 touches. He could get the three votes. As for North, as for North Melbourne, well, they need to get an easier opponent on Gavra and someone like the West Coast Eagles. Port Adelaide versus Essendon at Adelaide Oval. I tipped Essendon by a point, but it was Port by 69 points. Best players for Port Adelaide, Connor Rosie, 36 touches and three goals. Jason Orfras' first 30 touch game. And as for Essendon, the only good player they got was Zach Merritt and also Nick Martin. As for Jeremy Finlayson, he's been suspended for three games. Let's see how Port will operate without him. West Coast versus Sydney at the Adelaide Hills. I had the Swans by 80 points, but they won by 26 points. Harley Reid played well at West Coast and his goal celebration showed that I was wrong, he wants to stay. Elliot Yo played well for West Coast. As for Sydney, their best players are Isaac Heaney and Errol Golden. Freo versus Carlton at Adelaide Oval. I had Freo by a point, but Carlton won by 10 points. Looked like Freo were going to win that game until Manny Cottrell kicked the goal and the umpire and I'll give him Kennedy a goal for 30 seconds later. Playing well for Freo was Andrew Brayshaw. For Carlton, it was Jacob Wienering. Bulldogs versus Geelong at Adelaide Oval in the second game of the doubleheader. I had Geelong by 10 points, but Geelong won by 4 points. Best players for Geelong were Jeremy Cameron and Jack Bowles. Bulldogs, the midfield trio of Marcus Bontempelli, Tom Liberatore and Adam Trelaw. It was a very good game of footy. Gold Coast versus GWS at the Adelaide Hills. Gold Coast were in the game for most of the game and then GWS ran away with the last quarter to win by 28 points. I tipped them by two points at back last week. Best players for GWS are Stephen Cornelio, Lockie Whitfield and Toby Green's five goals. Best players for Gold Coast are Noah Anderson and how about a debut from Sam Clancy? He should have been picked in 2020! Richmond versus St Kilda and Nord Oval. Saints didn't even kick a goal in the first quarter but still went ahead and win by seven points. Best players for the Saints have got Ryan Marshall and Jack Steele. Richmond's best players are Shea Bowles with four goals and Dustin Marshall looked good on his return from injury. And I've tipped Noah Bolton for best player but he was injured that week. Last game of the round, Collingwood Hawthorne and Adelaide Oval. I had Collingwood by 30 points, but they won by 5 points. They were up by 37 at one stage in the second half, but Hawthorne brought it back and nearly won it. Best players for Collingwood were Jordan Dugowie and Josh Dacos. Hawthorne's best players were Blake Hardwick with 4 goals and Jack Jennifer nearly won the game for the Hawks against his old side. We have done a review for round four. I've got six out of nine. That brings my total score to 23 out of 38. And now we'll do the ladder. First on the ladder, we got GWS. They won the first four games. Look, they're looking good to win the premiership this year. Second, it's Melbourne. Oh, boy. Uh, at the start of the year, I thought Melbourne were going to be the Millie Vanilli of the AFL. But they won the first four games in a row, including two in Adelaide. Third, I got the, we got the Sydney Swans. They're three, four and one. If it wasn't for that loss to Richmond, they'd be still undefeated. Heading into the battle of the bridge in round eight. Four from the ladder, we got Carls and Mayor, four and zero. If, if it wasn't for uh, Matthew Kennedy, goal, driver, umpire decision, they would be likely three and one. Fifth on the ladder, we got Geelong. They're currently four and zero. And I've tipped them to finish 16th at the start of the season. Six have got Port Adelaide, four, three wins and one loss. They are looking like, they're starting to look like the Brisbane Lions of 2001 to 2003, the way they're going. Seventh is Fremantle, same reason with Port Adelaide. Eighth, Western Bulldogs. 
for just in the finals, only by percentage. Knife got St Kilda. I reckon they'll stay around that mark towards the second half of the season. Tepper got the Gold Coast Suns. They're, they need a few more easier opponents if they want to be up there in the eight, but I reckon they'll stay in that area. 11th, we got Collingwood. They'll climb up the ladder. 12th, we got Essendon. Well, this would be a time they start dropping down the ladder. 13th, we've got the Brisbane Lions. They've currently won, got their first win on Gabba Round. They're, if they could beat Melbourne, they can get back up the ladder. 14th, we've got Richmond. They're 1 and 4, but they're starting to show their potential. But come by round, they come after their buy round, they could start looking good. 15th, we've got the Adelaide Crows. They need to do something. They need a proper leadership camp. Not like the Gold Coast one at the end of 2017. 16th, we've got Hawthorne. They don't look like a 16th place side. 17th, we've got North Melbourne. No, they, they, they show some good potential in the early rounds, but they need some more luck on their side. 18th, we've got West Coast. They showed a little bit of potential, but um, they need more time. Melbourne versus Brisbane at the MCG. We've got Melbourne by 18 points. There has been some changes this week. Melbourne, Cosy Pickett's out suspended. Carlton Foster up in for his debut. Brisbane have not made any changes, although Lockie Neal got subbed off last week against North Melbourne. But Melbourne versus Brisbane has been a very good fixture in the recent years, including the 2022 semi final, which Melbourne lost. Best players for Melbourne, I'm going with Christian Petrarca and a breakout game for Blake Howes. Brisbane, I'm going with Hugh McCluggage. Bulldogs versus Essendon at Marvel Stadium, Friday night footy. Western Bulldogs by 54 points. Western Bulldogs like, looked great last week against Geelong. Essendon were woeful last week against Port Adelaide. Best players for Essendon, I've got Nick Martin. From the Western Bulldogs, I've got Marcus Bontempelli and Bailey Dale. GWS versus St Kilda at Manuka Oval in Canberra. Home at the Parliament House. Got GWS by 30 points. I reckon their best player will be Stephen Cornelio and Tom Green. St Kilda's best player I'm going with is Jack Steele playing against his old team. GWS have not won at home against the Saints since round 7 2019, also in Canberra. This is why they're playing in Canberra this week. Carlton versus Adelaide at Marvel Stadium. The two played a great game last year on Gabba Round. I got the Blues by two points. Best players are going with Paddy Cripps and, and his return from injury, Sam Walsh. For the Crows, I got Jordan Dawson. The Crows need to fix their act, otherwise they're going to lose by 80 points or more against the Blues. Gold Coast versus Hawthorne at People First Stadium. I've got the Gold Coast Suns by 28 points. Best players for the Suns, I've got Noah Anderson, Matt Rowell and Sam Clahese on game number two. Hawthorne, I'm going with Manuel Chole. He's got a point to prove against his old employers. Gold Coast have not lost to Hawthorne at the ground since 2014. When Hawthorne won that game by 99 points. That was when Coach Sam Mitchell was still playing. Port Adelaide versus Fremantle at Adelaide Oval. I got Fremantle by 8 points. Fremantle had not beaten Port Adelaide in Adelaide since 2012. Which was the same year Reese Maston was still on the charts. Port Adelaide, best players I got Connor Rosie and Jason Horn francis Freo, I got Andrew Brayshaw. I reckon um, it'll be a good game. Geelong versus North Melbourne at GMHBA Stadium. I've got the Cats by 130 points. North Melbourne are not playing one at that ground in nine years. Best players for Geelong. Well, as we can say for the first time in Lachlan does football history, the best players for Geelong, I'm going with the entire 23. I reckon the uh, Cats will keep their undefeated run going. West Coast versus Richmond at Optus Stadium. I reckon it'll be a competitive game for West Coast, but I got Richmond by 30 points. And that's the first time I picked Richmond on this series. And best players for Richmond, I got Toby Nankervis and Shay Barton. West Coast, for the first time in Lockheed Rondo's football history, I'm picking one of their players. I'm going Harley Reid and Elliot Yeo. That is it for this episode of Lachlan Does Footy. Let me, let, let me know in the comment section below and see which things we need to do to decorate the room and make it a bit more appealing for future Lachlan Does Football episodes. And we'll see you in round six. We have done a review for round four. I've got six out of nine. That brings my total score to 23 out of 38. And now we'll do the ladder.